So we recognize that uh, all of this information can be overwhelming. Uh, that is why we would like to show you uh, two simple ordering scenarios uh, within the actual system. So you can get a hands-on feeling on how the end user would actually purchase. Uh, please bear in mind that receiving and invoicing is also happening in Ariba. But for now, just to keep it uh, manageable and copable, uh, we will focus on the uh, requisitioning and the sourcing process of technical sourcing. So if you all bear with me, I will log in into our demo realm. OK, so what we see in front of us is actually the home page of guided buying. And this will be the core of what the user will actually see. Um, guided buying, uh, the, the landing page will consist of four different sections. So all the way on the top, we have a notification bar where you can see pending tasks that you may have. Uh, you have a shopping cart where you can uh, see the, yeah, the items that you put in the cart. Uh, which we are going to fill in a minute. Uh, and we have a user profile section where you can change your user profile and uh, some additional things. Then the second section is the, um, the search bar where people can find intuitively based on keywords, uh, the products or services that they are looking for. Uh, the third part is the, uh, the, uh, the, the different views that you have. So right now we find ourselves in the shop but you also have your favorites. So for example, my favorite items from IT hardware are a laptop, a mouse, and a keyboard. Users can configure this for themselves if they have frequent uh, items that they purchase. There's also a tab for your requests, uh, which shows you the status of what you have ordered, basically. And you have the your approval section. So let's say if uh, you are a manager, uh, you can uh, approve uh, purchases made by people, uh, by, by requests that, for which you are in the approval flow. So to simulate a purchasing journey uh, in guided buying, um, we are going to play a little scenario. So let's say I've been working with a company for five years now. Uh, when I uh, entered the business, they gave me a nice laptop and some uh, IT accessories. And right now it's uh, time for me to, uh, to get an upgrade and to get some new products. So there are several ways to, to purchase within guided buying, but let's first uh, go through um, the landing pages. So you can enter those with, with, with the tiles that, uh, that are in front of us. So a laptop and IT equipment would probably be in this section. And then there is a subsection, which can be uh, configured based on the taxonomy that you have within your company. So this business differentiated uh, professional services from information technology, office and facility management. So all of these are basically categories that, uh, that I can purchase from which all have subcategory, subcategories underneath them. Uh, so the laptop will be in IT hardware, which I then select. And, oh, I see that's nice. I have three different laptops that I can choose from. And I can also see that there is a catalog uh, for uh, computer accessories that I can access. So let's just access this just to show. Uh, we can see that we have a printer available, a Canon scanner, a nice Dell headset, a monitor, all of which I can order here. Let's say I would or like to order a mouse and there's just too many, um, too many catalog items. I can also use filters and make sure I only see the mouse related uh, items. But for now, let's go to the laptops. First, uh, I can see that the XPS from Dell is the most expensive one. So let's just go with that one. So when I click on it, uh, I can also see some additional information. So I can see uh, whatever uh, is in the description. So this is the item description. I can see it uh, has 13.3 inch, exactly what I want. So this all seems to be fine. Uh, I can also see the price. Uh, I can also see the lead time. So the uh, supplier has specified it uh, to be 10 days. Uh, when I scroll down, I have some additional information. I could go to the uh, supplier website, I could go to the manufacturer website. 
And I can also directly uh, add some accessories that I may be interested in. So for now, I really need a mouse. And I need a keyboard. So let, let's add those to the shopping cart. And of course, I need the laptop as well. Uh, actually, a colleague of mine asked me if I could order one for him as well. So let's just make it two then. I can see that everything is in the uh, shopping cart now. So let's move to checkout. Oh, and before I forget, since we're in the remote working era, I could also use a printer. So let's order a nice Canon printer. Do that to search. So when I perform a search, Canon printer, I can already see that uh, I get some suggestions and I'll just select this one. So here it is. I can just immediately add to cart and see it appear in my cart. Okay, now we are complete. I can move to the checkout page. Let's first name my requisition. All this IT supplies. Uh, when do I need it? Uh, well, let's be a little bit lenient. I would like to have it on the 1st of February. Okay. Then I see a procurement policy coming up uh, saying it is not allowed to order multiple laptops. Every employee should request a single laptop for their own. So my company really wants to know, uh, really wants to collect the data on when someone is ordering a laptop a new laptop and uh, yeah if you have multiple laptops per person of course then you will uh, distort this uh, data collection so okay then my colleague has to order it from themselves for herself let's just reduce this to zero or to one then back okay now it seems to be good but two other procurement policies show up so my company wants to know why i'm actually buying a new laptop it's a renewal since I've been working for five years with the business. Uh, and then I can see an information policy, which says that laptops already have the operating system and office installed. So I don't need to request these licenses separately. Cool. And the Canon printer is part of it. Okay. So I can already see the approval flow. Uh, these two users would have to approve before the order is created and is sent to uh, the supplier. So I'll just press submit and wait until uh, the approver has approved my requisition, requisition. So this will be the requisition process for catalogs. And uh, now we've also spoken about uh, how to perform sourcing activities, uh, technical sourcing activities to be exact, um, which can also be done through this same interface. So, Let's go with the second scenario uh, for which I need to uh, source a marketing consulting service. So this will probably be in professional services, uh, consulting services. Then I can see that there are two different tiles. Um, one is the request form, and this is specifically if you uh, need to source it, the line item form um, would hint to a, a requisition that has already been sourced. So. Let's go into the RFQ form. So again, I have to give a name to this requisition, marketing services, marketing consulting services. My estimated price would be 20,000. The respond by date, let's also make that the 1st of February. Type of consultancy, let's see if marketing is part of it. Yeah, we have marketing here. Uh, the start date, uh, I would like the service to start at the 1st of March. And end date, let's leave it tentative because I'm not sure about that. So my company gives me two options. Um, I can either add a service description in this box or I can upload a supporting document. Uh, since I've prepared a file with the uh, actual uh, scope and requirements, let's just go and add that into this one and upload it so the suppliers can see. 
So here it is. It's been uploaded within this form. And now I can see that within my area, uh, my company qualified a uh, qualified four different suppliers and actually preferred two. So which ones I like? I like Rapid Consultancy and I like MGKP services. So whenever I select this, I get a procurement policy saying that I need to select preferred suppliers for this uh, requisition. Uh, so, okay, since these are only qualified, I need to uncheck those. And I'm selecting Dutch Consulting then. And when I select Dutch Consulting, they say, okay, since your request exceeds 10K, please select at least two preferred suppliers. So they really want me to have a competitive bid uh, within this RFQ process. Okay, so now it seems to be fine. Uh, when I select those two, another procurement policy pops up saying that I need to specify the nature of the request. Well, it's a strategic project. Okay, then I think all is well, and we can go ahead and request the quotes. So when I press request quotes, uh, immediately a quote request is sent to both suppliers. Uh, so both of these suppliers will receive a, a message saying that they can participate in, uh, in the tender. Um, okay, now we're back on the homepage, but let's uh, go in the future a little bit uh, since we already prepared the responses. So whenever both suppliers respond, uh, you will get in the, into this view, um, which uh, basically is that you just received the quotes and you need to award the winner, basically. So I can see that both Dutch Consulting and Terra Advisory have responded. I can see their prices. So I can already tell that Terra Advisory is going to be the cheapest option. Um, but something that they also did is uh, they left a nice comment for us. So thank you for considering us. Thank you for your quote request, Rick. Terra, Terra Advisory, that's nice. And they also left a statement of work uh, where I can go through and exactly select uh, the one that I want. And they also signed a uh, non-disclosure agreement already. So I'm very price sensitive. So let's just go with Terra Advisory and accept the quote. Okay, so whenever I accept the quote, um, the quote request, the RFQ process will both basically flip into a requisitioning process that we just saw during uh, the uh, procuring of um, the laptop and the IT accessories. So this will just be the same view where I need to add a need by date again, which I previously sta stated uh, to be the 1st of March. So let's just fill it out. And I can see that my company has an additional procurement policy. Please make sure to read the procurement policy for consulting services before submitting the requisition. So probably uh, the company has had some requisitions that were not uh, within the uh, procurement policies of our company. Uh, but uh, I followed all the rules and uh, it should be fine. Again, we can see the approval flow. So it gets the, the PO gets, gets published and gets sent to the uh, uh, to the supplier whenever all the uh, approvers have approved and only then uh, the PO is created and uh, sent to the supplier. So that's fine. Let's click on submit. It's a success. And let's wait until they uh, approved the uh, requisition. So these are the two basic uh, requisitioning processes. Now, as a bonus, I would also like to show you um, the opportunity of punch out sites, which we have configured with Amazon. So with punch out sites, it is possible to enter uh, a environment that is uh, within a, a website of, of the um, of the supplier, so you don't have to have this. You, you don't have the layout of a uh, of Ariba guided buying. So instead of employees going to Amazon.com without this punch out, you can now also go to uh, Amazon.com 
within the punch out section. And what this means is that, for example, when I order a laptop stand, I can add it to my basket within, uh, within uh, Amazon. Uh, no thanks. So I can check my basket. So I've now, I now have the laptop stand within my basket. And I can punch back and to uh, the, um, the, the guided buying solution. So I punch back from Amazon to guided buying. And I can see that the thing that I ordered within the website of Amazon is now in my shopping cart in Ariba. And same goes for uh, the other process. I can just check out and add the information and make sure that my manager um, approves and that finance approves and that the procurement department approves. So while having the flexibility of going to the Amazon website, you will still maintain uh, the level of compliance that you would have with an internal catalog item, with a static catalog item in uh, the guided buying interface. Okay, so that concludes the uh, demo for now. Uh, let's move back to the presentation and go to uh, the workflows. So we've just seen uh, the sourcing and requisitioning process. And now I would like to go through the processes that happen after sourcing and requisitioning by following some charts. So after the requisition is approved, a purchase order is registered in the ERP uh, with, a, with a copy. Uh, and this will be pushed back to Ariba, which attaches to your order. So a PO number will be pushed back to Ariba which attaches to the order that you have made. So ERP and Ariba will always be in sync. Then the second step is that the order is sent to the involved supplier over the Ariba network. And after that, your supplier can uh, accept the order by sending a order confirmation over the Ariba network back to you. So this marks the end of the order process in simple terms, of course, and next is receiving. Uh, which can also be done in Ariba. Uh, once the supplier has shipped the order, uh, he or she can create a shipping note over the Ariba network to the buyer. And once the ordered items have reached the buyer, uh, the receiving of those items can either be done centralized uh, or by the requester, which will result in a goods received then. Uh, so that is the end of the receiving part. And then we go into invoicing and paying, which all starts off with the supplier uh, creating an invoice and posting it uh, over the Ariba network to the buyer. So within the interface of the supplier, they create a, uh, an invoice. And this, is, uh, this can be a flipped invoice from APO. And this will then be sent over the Ariba network to the buyer. Um, what happens next is the AP department will receive a notification that an invoice is ready to be processed, for example, for three-way matching. Um, this means that the amounts and or quantities of the purchase order, uh, the receipt and the invoice are compared and reviewed. Um, if everything matches, the invoice is cleared and reconciled and reconciled. Um, please note that this process can also be automated, uh, like I mentioned before, based on certain business rules. So the reconciliation does not have to be a manual task. If everything um, matches, this can also be automated. Uh, after that, the payment is made through the ERP system. And the last step would be to uh, send a remittance advice over the Ariba network uh, so that the supplier is aware that the payment has been made. Uh, 